So in this session we'll be discussing about details of dinoflagellates. We'll be talking about some characters of dinoflagellates and I've already told you that dinoflagellates are the members of photosynthetic protist. When they are photosynthetic protist, they will have something related to photosynthesis, they will have the pigments. Now remember that chlorophyll A is common to all photosynthetic protists, whether it is diatoms, whether it is dinoflagellate or whether they are euglenoid. So chlorophyll A will remain same. What differs is the presence of carotene, presence of chlorophyll B or C or maybe the presence of xanthophylls. So the chlorophyll A will be present along with chlorophyll C. The carotene which is present out here is alpha carotene. There are two types of carotene basically we'll be discussing alpha carotene and beta carotene. So they have alpha carotene and they have an important type of xanthophyll pigment which is called dinoxanthin. So remember they have these pigments for photosynthesis. They have chlorophyll A, chlorophyll C, alpha carotene and could be the xanthophyll and xanthophyll could be dinoxanthin. Now apart from dinoxanthin they also have one more pigment called didinoxanthin. So all these pigments are helping dinoflagellates to look forward for photosynthesis. They are mostly marine water but apart from marine water some of them are also found in fresh water. Now I've told you when they are what you call they are there are protista members those will have cell wall. Some of the protista member will also have cell wall and the cell wall is present. The cell wall will be present with cellulose. Now apart from cellulose they also have pectin. So their cell wall is made up of cellulose and pectin and cellulose and pectin they make the coat around the body which is thick and this thick coat it's called theca. So remember that body of dinoflagellates remains surrounded by a thick coat and thick coat it's preventing it from mechanical injuries and protecting the dinoflagellate body and this particular theca the coat which is called theca it's protected or it is manufactured by cellulose and pectin. So apart from cellulose something else is present in the cell wall of dinoflagellate that is pectin. When you talk about the further structure of theca, there are two grooves. One is transverse groove, one is longitudinal groove. So longitudinal groove it's called sulcus and transverse groove it's called annulus. So there are two grooves basically. So these grooves will be named according to the cut. Now there are two types of flagella. I've told you dino means two flagellates are flagella. So there are two types of flagella basically. One is transverse which is ribbon like and one is longitudinal flagella which is narrow and smooth and these flagella remain at 90 degree to each other when they are 90 degree to each other they produce the spinning movement this flagella will be doing the spinning movement like this this flagella will be doing the spinning movement like this so because of this spinning movement they are also called whirling webs because the flagella are at right angle and both of the flagella are showing their spinning movement because of that, this is, they are also called whirling webs. Webs means swimmers. So they are also called whirling swimmers. Now, both of the flagella are different. We have talked one flagella is ribbon-like, another flagella is heterocont or smooth. Because of that, they are known to have heterocont flagellation. Heterocont means two different type of flagella are present. Because of that, they are called heterocont flagellation. Remember this particular thing which has been asked. Now pigments I've already discussed now comes to reserve food so reserve food would be carbohydrate and oil they will have to reserve like the Monera was reserving in form of inclusion body so they will all they all will reserve their food in form of carbohydrates and oil. If you can look the structure so you have a well defined nucleus present in what you call dinoflagellate you can also look the flagella you can look the sulcus you can look what you call the inclusion body starch inclusion and oil inclusion they are the food reserves. They are mostly reproduced with the help of asexual method of reproduction which is binary fission I've told you. One dinoflagellate will be dividing into two dinoflagellates so this will be binary fission. They have zygotic meiosis. Now you should know about two concepts. One is zygotic meiosis, another is gametic meiosis. Dinoflagellates are basically haploid. So when one dinoflagellate is there and the second dinoflagellate is there, this is haploid, this is haploid. So the time they will be producing their gametes, the gametes will have to be haploid also, only the gamete will be haploid. So the gametes will be produced like mitosis because the body is haploid. Both of the gametes will be fusing when they will be forming the zygote, the zygote becomes 2N. Now the zygote cannot what you call convert into protista member because protista members are haploid. So this zygote will have to look forward for meiosis. Because of that they are called zygotic meiosis. The zygote is looking forward for meiosis. 
So these mammals will have the sexual reproduction which is of zygotic meiosis because the zygote is undergoing the meiosis. Now you see most of the part of dinoflagellate is haploid. This diploidy is coming only when the zygote is forming. So most life cycle of protista member of dinoflagellate will be having haploid life cycle. For some instance, the what you call diploid lifetime will be coming when the, they will have to form the zygote. So most of the time when what you call life cycle is haploid, this is called haplontic life cycle. So next section, I'll be telling you about some important facts related to dinoflagellates.